So, uh, of course, these these rulings affect us, uh, insurance, uh, financial services, but especially the insurance because it's more outgoing calls with that, and and of course lead generation. So, so what I want to do today is I'll give some insights of what I witness in the in the life insurance industry to kind of see if you're well averse in there, but maybe there's something that I've seen that maybe uh, helps direct why I'm asking specific questions today. But uh, but but I really like for you to tell us what these mean to four different specific entities, that, the way I've broken it down. One, at the agent and broker level. So agents and brokers, what does this mean for them, how they need to adjust, what they need to know. Uh, the IMO level, the, the FMOs, the BGAs, what does this mean at that level? Of course, the carriers, we speak directly with many carriers with our programs. So I, we, we've, I can share some good information there, what, what they do uh, and how it might affect them. But then of course, the lead generators as well. And there's quite a bit of overlap in the uh, the IMO agency level as with the lead generation level because some of these IMOs provide that lead generation to their agents. But first, I wanted to, I wrote something on this to get you started to uh, see how you respond and how, how, uh, where this conversation would go from this right here. So, so data being the new oil, I'm sure everyone's heard that. I'm sure you've heard this report too. So with data being the new oil. So the war on oil, this has been going on for decades, but now we're in the data war and i think we're just in the infancy of it right so aside from the war on information and i see the overlap there with the data war and war on information but uh in today's topics and how they relate to this uh you know financial services life insurance lead generation there's two major negative impacts we'll say uh number one and i'll go ahead and break the swear barrier for you uh it's what i call shit data it's uh it's garbage uh the on our website, we polish it up and call it waste management, but it's your cheap data leads, right? So we'll get into that. They're regurgitated, resold, redistributed. Um, I'm sure you've seen this time and time again, but we're gonna talk into that. Uh, but because it's cheap, it's appealing to our agents. And this kind of sets the tone leading to the next negative impact, the second negative impact, uh, consumers getting flooded with the endless calls. You know, it's and now text messages are, are in that flooding as well. So uh, who, who's responsible for these negative impacts? We say both parties. Both parties need to take responsibility. Number one, the data vendors, they call themselves lead generators, lead vendors. Which we we kind of start to recall them as data brokers. They're just, they're data brokers. So, but they make mega margins on the resale of this data. Uh, you know, there's no operating cost. Uh, they know much of their data is garbage. So they're taking advantage of the thirsty agents who, who need people to call and with no incentive to stop you know, really no way to catch them unless you take the length we did. I published a video on my experience chasing down the these leads and where they came from. And I'll I'll share that with you uh, at some point too. You can find it on our channel. That's probably a popular video to, to get a hold to because I share the entire experience, how I use my software engineer to assist me in digging out permalinks. And we found the, the true marketing that was going on and it was, it was a highly unethical practice. So there's a video out there for that I can show you. But anyway, number two, the agents have, they seemingly have no remorse for blowing up people on the phone anymore. You know, they're, they're, they know they're doing this. It's inundation of phone calls, but they're, they're pissing off the innocent public, right? So these people didn't ask for this. So we, we take a stand against that as well. You know, my mother visits and her phone rings constantly while she's at the house and she doesn't even bother to answer it anymore because it's so inundated. Like I said, it's getting flooded. So we, I don't feel sorry for either party, honestly. I believe both can do better. I think a pivot is necessary. So uh, with these rulings, I'm, I'm not really angry. I say December 13th was kind of an early Christmas present for us. So. How, how does that get you started and what are your thoughts on, on a take like that? Well, I think, um, I mean, everything you just said aligns with reach, right? And, and okay. so let's go back to the beginning, right? And you, you have good instincts here because it, it, you really can't tell the story without understanding where we all came from, yeah. um, which was, you know, two years ago, three years ago, the lead generation industry was running completely amok. There was absolutely no standards. Um, there was no attempt to self-regulate. It was a race to the bottom. Everyone was just looking at what everybody else was doing and saying, well, they're getting away with it, so I'm going to do it. And you know what? I'm going to find a way to reduce even more friction in the funnel by basically doing something even sleazier from a data perspective. And then you're right. The callers would get a hold of the data, and they would just hammer it. And there was no one telling them that they ought to slow down. And you know, the concept was, hey, look, we've got express written consent, so none of the rules apply to us. Um, 
And that was a real problem. And my law firm, Troutman Amin LLP, started attending all these shows, uh, LeadsCon and, and Lead Generation World, uh, and all the, the shows that we could find where these lead generators were present. And we represented the big brands, right? The big direct consumer marketers who were buying all the leads, ingesting all this risk, because as you correctly pointed out, the data sets were not good in many instances. I mean, sometimes they were. It's not like they were right. completely garbage, but right. in many instances, they weren't good. It was leading to lawsuits. Uh, and I realized pretty early on that, man, if I didn't get out there and look these guys in the eye and say, stop selling my clients junk, they were just going to keep on doing it. And it was really hard because, you know, the marketing folks at the brands, right, they've got relationships with these guys and they're just like buying the stuff and no one's really betting anything. It's, it's crazy. It's madness the way this was working out. Um, so for uh, over a year, I, I worked with the trade organization that existed at the time in the in the tra in the uh, the lead gen world, and I realized you know, these guys they're not serious. They don't want change. They're not they're not really trying to clean things up. You know, it's just lip service. Uh, so I created Reach, you know, directly to respond to these issues that you're identifying. One, getting rid of fraud out there, getting data sets that make sense, putting together standards for what a web form submission should actually look like. So that a lead buyer that relies on a reach generated lead knows that they're going to get a quality consumer that really wants to hear from them, right? Which is really what this whole thing's supposed to be about. Um, and then setting standards for the lead buyers as well, saying, look, you know, you're going to get a quality lead. So don't hammer it, man. There's no need to call that person 10 times a day. Just shoot them a text. They'll get back Thank to you, right? This whole That's what this whole thing is. You've just watched a segment of our interview with attorney Eric Troutman. We'll put another segment of this interview right over here really encourage that you watch this entire interview we'll put that video right here see you guys next time